I mean, there was Muslims who are en route to America who had landed at the airport, hadn't passed their passport control yet before the ban had been enacted. And they were just kind of stuck in limbo. They were, they had left their own country, but they weren't allowed back in, they weren't allowed into America. Uh, my name is Daniel Metz. I live in Istanbul. I am an American. I was born and raised in Chicago. I studied journalism at Indiana University. I've done some journalism work in the past, and I still write some research articles every once in a while. There's essentially two different narratives, and it's strictly along party lines. So you'll see right-wing or more conservative uh, Republican newspapers, outlets that kind of draw immigrants, that draw migrants and refugees as sources of conflict, sources of culture issues and sources of uh, security problems. On the other hand, if you look at more leftist, more liberal, more Democrat publications, you see a lot of stories about integration, about people fleeing, about humanizing aspects. I think what is affecting the media's discourse on this is more coming from the upper class of politicians. I mean, we saw a big radical change in how the media was portraying refugees when Donald Trump was elected. Uh, when we have issues brought up like the Muslim ban, when we have the build that wall being chanted at rallies, it kind of makes everything much more, much more focused than it was in the past on specific issues. So I, I really don't think the public itself is influencing all this discourse. I think they're just kind of accepting what has been fed to them, either from the media directly or from politicians via the media. So the thing is, I don't think sentiment has actually increased or changed. Uh, when we see media talking about migrants, talking about refugees, we always tend to gravitate towards the most extreme viewpoint, especially in this past election when Trump wanted to enact a Muslim ban and then build a wall. He got people scared and it got people motivated in a sense that it's benefited him and his party. Well, the biggest, the biggest false misconception is that refugees bring an extreme threat to our national security. Along with that, there's been this idea that the vetting process or the way that we choose which refugees can be sent to our country is flawed or insufficient or lacking, which is, is completely inaccurate. I mean, I've spoken to several refugees themselves who are in the process of being resettled. And they say they've spent a year in just in the preliminary phase of interviewing for to be resettled to a country. Uh, I mean, just the way that we go through this entire process is just so, so uh, meticulous that to make the assumption that it's insufficient or it's lacking is just ridiculous. When the Muslim ban was enacted, there was protests. There was massive protests at a lot of major airports. And seeing that massive and almost instantaneous response from people in America who realized that these people aren't here to murder us, they aren't here to destroy our lives or to change the way that we as a society behave and act and think. It was very reassuring to see that there was people from all walks of life, from all groups, from all socioeconomic classes that were willing to step up and say something in support of their fellow humans. The best thing to do if you're wanting to help is to think locally. I know migration is a big global issue. I know that refugees come from other countries, but you can't think about flying to another country just to provide your temporary help to an agency because it's not as helpful as you think it is. But what you can do as, as yourself is to look at the resettlement agencies in your own country. So looking to get involved and making sure that refugees in your country feel welcomed is one of the most impactful things that you can do, in my opinion.